Hey everyone, Paul from Grindhouse Funny House, and uh, here be another entry in my Only on VHS series. Uh, today's pick, it is Out of Bounds, an action thriller from 1986, starring one of the Brad Packers at the height of his fame, Anthony Michael Hall. Let's take a look at the trailer. He's accused of a crime he didn't commit. Why don't you believe me? If you're innocent, you've got nothing to be afraid of. Turn yourself in. Stranded in a city he doesn't know. I need your help. Well, what do you want with me? You're the only person I know in Los Angeles. Hunted by a man he's never met. Anthony Michael Hall. Could turn out to be a real hot one. Out of Bounds, rated R. Starts Friday at select theaters. So... Hall plays a farm boy who uh, moves to L.A. to be with his uh, hotshot brother because his parents are divorcing and uh, they're selling the precious farm. So uh, Daryl Cage, Hall's character, wants just to start somewhere new, starts a new life. And already as he steps out the plane uh, in Los Angeles, Daryl picks up the wrong bag and... Uh, in this bag in f that belongs to a drug dealer played by Jeff Kober, uh, you'll never guess what's in that bag. It is chock full of heroin, just tons and tons of heroin. Uh, and right there, my first question would be, why would you check in a bag full of drugs? Even 1986, I'm sure they were still doing checkups. And it was heroin worth one million dollars so basically it's uh it's a dumb move first of all and there's way better way better way to, to move the product you know it's just it, it is mind-boggling even from 1986 uh that's all i'm saying anywho uh the drug dealer spots him getting out of the airport runs after them daryl and his brother just drives off he sees the driver's license, tracks them down, kills off the brother and the wife, and uh, Daryl is on the run. Before all of that, on the plane, uh, he meets cute a girl, this punk rocker chick named Diz, played by Jenny Wright. So he decides to track her down at her workplace because she gave him, she told him to where she works, so if ever they wanted to hook up, I guess, they could meet up. So he tells her that the cuts are after him, a drug dealer, wants his drugs uh <laughs> she drops everything of course and tags along for the ride the rest of the movie is just daryl and diz trying to get back to the drugs to the drug dealer and uh, not being caught by the cops and that's about it this was clearly anthony michael hall's wanting to change his nerdy good guy image john Hughes created for him from the uh, one-two punch that was the breakfast club and uh, weird science the year before uh, playing tough was is not his strong suit, at least not in this movie. Also, his character in this has no backstory whatsoever. All we know is that his parents are divorcing, and for some weird and then some weird random scene where he just throws a knife at a at, at a at a, <laughs> at a target, hitting a bullseye, and I was like, why are they showing this right now? And obviously, this will be used later on in the movie. Uh, Jenny Wright, you might remember her as May in uh, the classic vampire movie Near Dark. Catherine uh, Bigelow, I think that was her first movie in 87. Bill Paxton was in that too. Uh, I guess that was her other big 80s highlight. Uh, the other one being Saint Almost Fire the year before. And as for director Richard Tuggle, that was his only other directing credit with the 1984 Clint Eastwood uh, actioner Tightrope. Like I said, I didn't buy Hall's transformation as some badass that uh, all of a sudden goes from nerd to being coolified in a uh, typical 80s montage to uh, the Smith's How Cool Is Now, uh, so he can hide in plain sight from uh, the drug dealer and the cops. Uh, I thought Hall and Wright had the lackluster chemistry at best. Uh, she come off way too strong in their first scene on the plane, and there is no reason whatsoever why these two should be together. Uh, another distracting thing for me, and that could be really nitpicky, but uh, Hall uh, suffers from uh, open mouth disease. Uh, I, I swear to God, so many insects could have gone to that mouth hole of his. It's, it, it's really amazing. Uh, the drug dealer played by Jeff Kober, you might remember him from uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, 
and another uh, vampire show called Kindred the Embrace, which I really liked. Uh, he's pretty good and menacing in this. Uh, just to show us how much of a psychopath he is, uh, he takes his uh, lady friend's little tiny mice in his hand and then just squishes it like this, just to show us what kind of bastard he is. And um, all he wanted was his shit. Where's my shit? Have you seen my shit? That literally could have been uh, the tagline of the movie. The cops chasing after him, the lead detective is played by uh, Glenn Turman from uh, horror black exploitation classic JD's Revenge. And uh, that's all I was thinking about every time I was on, on the, the screen because I, I saw the movie recently and it's a pretty good movie. And uh, he's the one saying the line to All's character, if what you're saying is true, then you're seriously out of bounds. Title of the movie, you have to say the title of the movie in those kinds of movies. Uh, what else can I say? Uh, the brother and wife in this at the beginning, they're barely a blip. You don't even care that, at all that they got whacked. Uh, also, their scenes are just abruptly cut from one to the next as if they were missing coverage. Like they forgot to film things in betweens, which I find uh, a bit jarring. A few cool things. Uh, Raylan's dad in Justified. Amazing TV show, by the way. If you've never seen it, shows up as uh, the A agent, which I thought was pretty cool. Uh, we see C.U.C. and the Banshees and Tommy Keen perform live on stage in nightclub scenes where our main character walks around. Uh, and as you know, I'm a big um, 80s soundtracks fan. And this one is one of the good ones. Uh, you got some from Stuart Copeland, uh, who also wrote the score. Uh, Adam Ant, Night Ranger, uh, Bill and the Carlisle, Les Smiths, The Cult, Sammy Agar, Siouxsie, and Tommy, of course. Uh, Meatloaf shows up in this three-fourths in the movie. Uh, he appears playing a drug runner who gets dispatched real quick in a, a car explosion, but uh, you know, meatloaf. So uh, all in all, see what I did there? Uh, if you're a fan of Breakfast Club and Weird Science and uh, who isn't, uh, I'm guessing Hall playing against type is interesting enough and it was a valid effort on his part, but in the end uh, it didn't amount to much. I will say I am surprised uh, it, this never got a proper digital physical release, being that it's a Brat Pack title and it came out right after uh, Breakfast Club and uh, Weird Science. Uh, most, if not all of them, are out on DVD and Blu-ray, all the Brat Pack uh, titles. Uh, this must be some rights issues. And uh, although you can buy it, you can watch it digitally on uh, YouTube as a YouTube movie for $3.99, or uh, do like I did and uh, track a copy on VHS and watch it the old fashioned way. That's it for my review for Out of Bounds right here. Hope you enjoy it. Uh, if you wanna see more reviews uh, like that or new uh, wonderful videos of that ilk, uh, why don't you help me out by liking it and then perhaps sharing it. And uh, while you are it, add it, why not subscribe to my channel as well? and uh, click on that tiny little bell so you'll never miss an update from me. Uh, also go check out my Instagram feed at Grindhouse Funhouse where I post on daily, uh, Grind Funhouse on Twitter, Grind House Funhouse on Facebook and grindhousefunhouse.tumblr.com on Tumblr. Uh, in the comment section below, let me know if you saw the bounds. Did you like it or you thought it suck donkey balls? Either or, you know. Um, and also let me know about uh, other VHS titles that's been out of print or uh, only on VHS. Always on the lookout for those. Although by now I have a pretty tight list of at least 70 titles. So this series could go on forever. Um, so thank you for watching. And uh, you'll see me again very, very soon.